Hi, my name is Phil Hinkle, and I'm here today to give you a short tutorial on Mercalli version 3. In my opinion, Mercalli is one of the flagship products for the ProDad line of utilities. It's been around for a couple of years. They keep releasing versions that update the stabilization utility, and it just keeps getting better and better. Let's take a look at version 3 and see how it works. This is your main interface, and I'm going to click up here to open some media. If I wanted to, I could just drag and drop. I'm going to go to my video directory, and I've got one for ProDad and for Ver Mercalli version 3. I think I want to use this picture, this video clip here, and I think that one there will work. I can actually open two files. One is from a GoPro which would be in my media bin over here we can see them. One is a GoPro footage I shot of a bike ride around my local bike trails in town and the other shot is from my GH2 where I was out filming some footage in a nature conservancy um, in one of the outlying communities for them to use on their website. So first I think we'll start with this nature conservancy footage. It looks kinda cool. As you can see, before anything can be done, we're going to have to analyze the video. But if we click Analyze Video right now, we can see in our information settings that the actual duration of this clip is 21 minutes. I don't really want to stabilize and analyze 21 minutes. I just want to take a small chunk out of here that I may incorporate into another video project. So I'm only going to take a 10 or 15 second chunk. So what I need to do is find it. And I can find it by clicking on the Play button. I can click in here. This is actually aerial footage. It's not from a gimbal-enabled multicopter. It's actually from a large plane that carries my GH2 around. So it's a fairly significant size plane. And you can see, without a gimbal, it needs a little bit of help. So Mercalli's going to help us out here. I've actually found some spots in this clip that I like. And I believe it starts around 7 minutes and 30 seconds. So I'm going to come out here in my timeline down on the bottom and find about 735. I believe that's where it started. I've got a red marker there. That's where my timeline cursor is. I'm going to pull my endpoint over there and it's going to snap into place. You can see over here in my information panel that I've started at 735. I want to take about 10 seconds to 745 and I want to play with that content. I actually happened to catch some geese flying by too which was really cool. And somewhere around 745, I'm going to stop the clip. Okay, I'm going to drag my out point over. Just like that. And I analyze with an in and an out setting. It's going to only analyze that particular length of footage. And in this case, it's 10 seconds and 0 0.310. So I'm going to click Analyze. As it's analyzing, you can see the information along the different axes where it's finding things and it's accounting and it's logging that information so it knows what to do. Now let's get on with the stabilization. A couple of things up here across the top that we want to learn about. There's three different kinds of cameras we can play with. There's a universal camera, a glide camera, and a rock steady camera. Universal and glide camera are very similar to each other. It's one of those things where you'll just want to experiment and see which one works the best because every different footage will react differently in Mercalli. So sometimes a glide camera will work better than a universal camera. The rock steady camera, however, that's going to try and create a rock steady shot. You don't want to have a lot of panning and tilting. Where this would be good is if you want to shoot some scenery and you were like doing a big scenery shot of a beautiful sunset or something like that and you were doing it handheld without a tripod so there might be that little bit of jitter in the shot that would take care of that kind of a shot really well for right now we're gonna leave that on universal camera rolling shutter compensation most cameras today have a CMOS type sensor and as such they can have rolling shutter problems where light poles are straight up and down images when there's a pan will go sideways on you so if you just click that, if it comes across any of those kind of issues, it's going to fix those in the stabilization process. Now we want to look at these two options up here, Avoid Border and Pan Shot Smoothing. Another place you can find those is in the Settings tab over on the right. And if we mess around with the Avoid Border, our border down here is going to move. If we mess around with the Pan Shot Smoothing, the Pan Shot Smoothing here is going to move. These two fields are tied to these two sliders as well. So they're basically the same thing. You can use either spot to, to uh, modify your stabilization settings. 
If you slide the avoid border, you can see it's going to zoom in a little more or it'll zoom out more. The more it's zoomed out, the less stabilization you're going to have. The more you're zoomed in, the more stabilization it will have. Keep in mind that the more you zoom in on your footage, the less resolution you're going to have on your final output because it's having to zoom in to create the stabilization. Same thing with the pan shot smoothing. You can see how it's moving your shot around a little bit. And you can see over on the right it's also moving that slider. You can tweak this and, and readjust it to make your shot better. Just remember that the more stabilization you push at it, the less resolution you're going to have on your final result. Another thing to look at is over here we've got a view result. We can view our source, which is before it was analyzed, so you can see how much it's had to crop in or zoom in on our footage. If we want to do a horizontal compare, we can see unstabilized and stabilized footage. It's not going to play completely smooth, but you can see on the left is the bad footage. On the right is the much smoother footage. We can also do that with the vertical compare. You can see the difference. The top is obviously the unstabilized, where the bottom is the stabilized footage. Before we go any further, I want to highlight one additional little piece of information, and that is our dashboard. Most of these little gadgets on the dashboard are just informational, but the Suppress actually gives us some key information. For the purposes of demonstrating the Suppress gadget, I'm going to expand my out a little bit longer, and I'm going to reanalyze my content. and we're done analyzing. The reason I wanted to add some content to our analyzed section is because I want to show you something down here in this graph. If I take my avoid border and I start sliding it up, and I can also slide from over here. I'm going to slide from right here. You can see my suppress button on my dashboard stays green. If I go down to the left and I'm basically zooming out, oh it turned red. And if I keep going you'll see a bunch of little red dots down here in the graph. If you see a red dot down there in the graph, that means you've gone past what Smirkali can do to stabilize your video at the zoom level you're at. So what you do is you first would move it up until the red turns to green. You can hit the play button. You can see it's still hitting red kind of frequently. So even while it's playing, I'm going to slide my avoid border up until I see it quit turning red. By default, I think my analyze was down in the 17 or 18 somewhere. And now I've got it up to about 38, and occasionally it goes red, which means it's just hitting its limit. We can keep moving our slider up until we don't see any more red in there, but every time we do, we're zooming in. It kind of helps us find that compromise between how much we want to zoom in and how much we want to stabilize. It's a very valuable little tool. It's this suppress button right here. You can see now that there's no more red showing, but I'm pretty zoomed in in the grand scheme of things. So that's what the suppress gadget does on the dashboard. I wanted to show you how it works so you could utilize that when you're working in Mercalli. Now let's go back to the short version of the clip and continue on the stabilization process. Now, the pan shot smoothing is the same as over here. If we click on it here, we can see in our stabilized footage on the right what exactly is happening. I, I kind of like to use it this way to see the repercussions of what it's going to be before and after. Roll balance, if I wanted to mess with that, it's going to have to zoom in a little bit more, and it's going to actually correct a little bit of my roll. I was on a plane, so there's going to be some roll, but it can smooth a little bit of that out and take some of the jittery away. And again, this is the same as our border up here. Keep camera dynamic. You want to leave that check for most footage like this. If you've got some handheld scenery shot, then you would uncheck that, and it will actually do a little bit better job. But for most of your footage, you're going to leave that checked. There's some other options down here. Zoom balance. Again, I would encourage you to play with some of these. I've played with that a little bit. Click the play. Kind of make a visual. Does that seem any better than it was before? Might be a little difficult to tell. Um, we can click on the pan balance. If you move the slider, you see there's not a whole lot going on with that in our footage. I'm going to actually uncheck that. The tilt balance. It does make a little bit of a difference. I think I'm going to run that up there just to see what happens. Let's see how our footage looks now. 
It does look pretty smooth over there. It's not going to be completely smooth because I had a plane. There was a little bit of a wind, and it was bouncing around the sky pretty good. Okay, I'm going to stop, click the view result, and go full screen and actually see what my footage looks like now. That looks pretty decent. It's kind of hard to tell because we're dropping frames right now. When we export it for final output, it's going to look a lot better. Now, if you remember, I had two videos that I brought in. If I come over to my media bin, I'm on this one here, which is my GH2 footage. If I want to work with my other footage, I just click on the GoPro footage. And you can see here I am riding along some bike trails in my local town. So I've picked the spot out before I did the tutorial. Somewhere around 7.35 is where I want to start working. That looks like a good spot. You can see I'm at 7.35.29. I'm going to slide my endpoint over. And I'm going to hit the play button until about 7.45. And we are there. That looks pretty good right there. I'm going to drag my out point over and there. Now I'm going to analyze my footage so we can work with it. Again, we have the graphs here going crazy because this is a much bouncier footage. You can see where it's working the hardest on the different axis, horizontal, vertical, and tilt. Something tells me those would be good ones to mess around with in our tweaking if we wanted to make it smoother. So let's look at the version now. This does look much cleaner even with the drop frames going on. So I'm going to stop that. Now up here let's pick the glide camera this time and see what happens. Oh, It says we have to analyze our footage. Once you change cameras it's got to reanalyze so it knows what to do with that particular footage for the particular camera that you have selected. Again we got our grass. We're going to let it go. Okay let's play it. looks pretty close to what the Universal did. Sometimes you'll notice a difference between the two cameras. It actually looks pretty good. Okay, let's play around just a little bit with it. I'm going to click on my horizontal again. I'm going to go back to my settings. Let's play around over here instead of up here this time. I'm going to make sure my rolling shutter compensation is turned on. You can see a little bit of a difference in my video when I click that because it's correcting a little bit of the rolling shutter in some of the trees. You wouldn't normally see it, but sometimes after you stabilize your footage, it comes out at you. Okay, if I work with my pan shot smoothing, you can see what it's doing to the video. It's having to zoom in and move some things around, so I'm actually going to bump that up a little bit. The roll balance, see what happens when I move that. It's a, this is a good way to see exactly what's going on in your video. All the way down, there's like very little compensation. If we move it up here, I'm going to move it up there, somewhere around that. I'm boosting all of these probably farther than I normally would, just for the sake of demonstration. I'm going to leave that one somewhere close to where it was. Zoom balance, what happens if we slide that around? Whoa, you can see it can go a little crazy there. We don't want to go there. Let's just turn that off. Pan balance, what happens if we mess around with that one? You can see how it's sort of tilting and then twisting it. I'm going to leave most of these alone, I think. The tilt, we were seeing a lot of stuff in our graphic, in our analyze. So I think I'll leave that one on, bump it up a little bit. Okay, we've pretty much got that one fixed to our liking now. So if I click on the view result, I can play my video, see how it looks. Most of the time when you click the analyze video, no matter which camera you've got selected, Mercalli is going to do a pretty good job just on its own with the default settings. I very seldom tweak the settings to increase the stabilization. I found it does a pretty good job on its own most of the time. But obviously, depending on your footage, your mileage may vary on that as every clip is different and some need a little bit more help than others. Now that we've done all of that, I think we're ready to export some footage. So all we need to do now is come up here to Export Stabilized Media. To export our footage, we could just click the red here, and it'll start the export of two files, but we need to do a little bit more setup first. First thing, we want to say, export files into another directory. I don't want to export them back where I started. I always like my stuff in another directory. So I'm actually going to click on my folder structure. I'm going to come down to Videos, Prodad, Mercalli, and I'm going to make a new folder called Finals. 
Okay, so that's going to be my folder for export. Quality, there's different qualities. There's a high, medium, and low. They recommend the medium. Honestly, I've compared the medium and the high, and I cannot physically tell the difference. So leave it on medium, save a little bit of hard drive space, and make the processing faster. There's two options here. If you use the film strip option, it's going to export an MPEG-4 format, an MP4 file. If you use the little Q, it's going to create an MOV file, a Q QuickTime file. And depending on your editing system, uh, one may be better than the other for import. You will know that based on your edit system. We also have this view result, vertical, and horizontal compare. If you have one of these selected and you hit the start export, it's going to actually export the split screen where you're not having the drop frames and you can really see compared side by side which one's better. I usually trust what I saw on the drop frame version in the preview when we were doing the stabilization. I always do the view result. The Otherwise, you have to let it encode. you got to check it, and if you don't like it, you've got to start over. So I'm just going to cut out a little bit of the step and trust my instincts back here on the stabilization process. So I've got everything set up there now. All I have to do is click Start Export. It's going to export both of my files into my new directory. As you can see, it's moving along through there. It's going to take a few minutes. Depending on the speed of your computer and all these other factors, it could take a few minutes. Um, if you've got a really long clip, it could take a while. It does have to export all of those files. As you can see, we're now done in my output bin. I have both files. If I click here, I can play my GoPro footage. If I click here, I can play my flight footage. Let's play the flight footage and see what it looks like. Wow, that flight footage does look much improved. I can certainly tell the difference. I, can, I think I like what we created. And let's play the GoPro footage and see how it looks. And you can see on my bike riding footage that it is also greatly improved over the original file that we saw when we loaded it into Mercalli. That's all for this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned a little bit. If you need to stabilize your footage from a point of view cam or from any of your other handheld footage, Mercalli can take a somewhat jumpy shot or a little bit of a shaky shot and it can oftentimes make it a very usable solid shot that you can incorporate into your footage when maybe you didn't think that shot was going to work out for you. So give the utility a try. You can download a demo version before you buy just to make sure it's going to do the job. I think you'll enjoy the utility. Have a great day and uh, enjoy editing.